I'm gonna be upfront. This game isn't for everyone. If this game's on sale somewhere for super cheap and you clicked on this video to see if this game's for you, I hope you like what you see. However, I'll understand if you click off this video right now. But if you're curious about a more niche title from Kampachan and I have sung, then there's more spoiler free video for you. With that out of the way, welcome to my review of Death and Request. Directed by Yohei Sato and produced by Norisa Kochiwa. These people worked on a lot of IF Kampa games, but there's one name I had thought I'd seen before, one Makoto Kodoin. This man has written a series of games known as Corpse Party, and there's even a manga and film with the same name. But unlike those games, this isn't a cryptic tale of trial and error, most of the time. This game is very different from other Compile Heart Idea Factory games. It has some things in common with them for sure, the visual novel style cutscenes filled with exposition, the fun and colorful characters, the silly character interactions, anime style opening, and a splash of fan service. This is a dual audio game, I prefer the Japanese audio and all footage and pronunciations will be taken from there. Regardless, let's get started with the review. Presentation is fine. This game has flaws, but it's also part of the aesthetic, which makes it equal parts brilliant and disappointing. I'll elaborate. This game is similar to the plot of Sword Art Online. Kind of? We well, have your main characters in the game. Shina, Lily, Aru, Clara, Licia, Celia. And they're inside the game. Inside the game. World's Odyssey. But there's a catch. World's Odyssey was never released, and it's full of bugs and glitches. Some of the low points and presentations and turn offs for some players. Like this game's very hands-off first two hours-ish, it kind of plays out like an anime for the start, which, well, sets the stage for the rest of the game. It's a little cheeky about its story and presentation information telling you the game will take about 50 hours to beat. I did it about 45 without rushing, no guide. Anyway, the meat of the game is the story and the plot, so let's talk about that a little more. Story is good. This game lets you know you aren't in the hyperdimension right off the hop, as the game starts off with Arata calling out to Shina as she gets killed. As a woman tells you in every grisly detail what is happening. Then Shina wakes up with no memory of what has happened. So, the plot is based around two playable characters. Shina and Arata. Shina has been missing for over a year when out of the blue, Arata gets an email from her with an attachment he can't open. But he finds... The World's Odyssey servers are online, and there's one player logged in, Sheena, who has a nasty case of amnesia. This is a bit of a compile heart trope, but just roll with it. When Arata makes contact with Sheena and her memories start to return, she remembers working with Arata on World's Odyssey, but she has no idea how she got into the game, why the servers are on, or where her body is. But they know the only way to get her out is the ending. So, like Sword Art Online or other animes with MMO style games in them, having an ending in an MMO is strange, but if they can activate the ending, Sheena can get out. You meet other characters along the way, the game's NPCs, but they act like real humans and their designs are very different from what Sheena remembers. And then, real world items start showing up inside of World's Odyssey. As Arata, you look into these real world items to solve the mystery of what happened to Sheena, how she got stuck, and where is her body? The real world sections aren't much more than talking to people, watching the story, sometimes making a choice, and it isn't a game where the player choices affect the ending in different ways. The bad endings that can happen during the game are some of the most jarring. I guess that's what happens when you get the writer who also wrote Corpse Party. But I'll just say it's possible to get a bit of fan service to someone dying horribly within five minutes of the other happening. This game has dread-filled tone that reflects perfectly with its music. I wasn't expecting the story to turn out the way it did, but it's time to move on to... The graphics. The graphics are fine. Like most Kampachan and I've seen games, cutting-edge graphics aren't on the menu. But what's used here is pretty good. If you're playing on PC in the 1080p or native 4K modes, this game seems to render at only three internal resolutions, 720p, 1080p, and 4K. Anything else is upscaled or downscaled 1080p or 720p. This might be an engine limitation, but really 1440p monitors aren't super common, and neither are 4K. So I can't complain. With that said, a super sampling option would be nice when you have the hardware overhead to run the game at 4K and downsample it. 
Uh, I did have a couple issues with running it on my 4K monitor and it would set back to 720p, but I think that's a Windows problem. With this game's limited use of AA and environments that feel a little basic, character models that aren't exactly high fidelity, you get an adequate visual representation. I know that sounds a little harsh, but I wasn't expecting to play a game that looked like Cyberpunk. So it's actually fine. Now this is a compile hard game, so there's always 2D art assets and a lot of things happen in the 2D plane. And the 2D character art is pretty good. Not as well polished as Neptune's art assets, but good in its own way. Quick side rant here. The option menu is really bare bones and okay. I have an issue with the volume option in particular, as there are four settings, mute, one, two, and three. And I find the music in some areas to overpower the voice acting. Or, other, or the sound effects. I would prefer more options for the music and it not to be set to one at default. Gameplay. Gameplay is adequate. This game was clearly designed for a controller, so I highly recommend one. If you are brave or for fun play Dark Souls on keyboard and mouse, have at it. I like to lean back and just enjoy the game with the controller in my hand. Anyway, the game consists of mostly moving your party around the game from location to location and fighting monsters in random encounters. Now you can see and have the choice to avoid the monsters in the overworld, however, some fighting is required to complete the game. Combatants take turns attacking based off their speed stats. You can pick up to three actions and perform them. Then there's this billiards sort of knockback mechanic that you can throw enemies into other party members for an extra free attack, battle barriers for damage, or both, or even monsters into other monsters if you want. But besides being able to learn other abilities from using your special abilities, there isn't much to combat. But then again, if you're picking up a Compotown and I have some game for the combat alone, and it's not called Neptune Shooter, I, I think you need to look elsewhere. Now the music is good. I'm gonna play some samples here like always. And I really like the camp music. It's really soothing and a little bit foreboding.
Overall, this game is good. I loved playing this flawed gem of a game. I know this game isn't for everyone, and I really didn't get into the real world characters because I felt like the less you know going in, the better time you'll have. There is a sequel in the works, and I'm really not sure how I feel about it, besides that I'm in day one on PC. This game is a real journey. It only took me about 40 hours or so to finish, but it definitely felt longer. And I also felt a strong connection to the characters and wanted to see them through to the end, alive. This game takes so many twists and turns, it was so not what I thought it was going to be, that I just had to share it. Just a tip before I go, save often, this game isn't always nice and it can be a little buggy. That brings us to the end of the video. Please tell me what you thought about this review in the comments and feel free to hit either button. I'll be back with a more interesting game next time. Until next time, thank you so much for watching. You have a good day and sayonara.